button. Hi everyone. My name is Kathy Hart and you are attending our um, our bits and okay. Oh dang. Now I'm trying to figure out how to do my share. Okay, it's over here. No, it isn't. No. Okay. So Mary Ellen, I'm having a trouble sharing my screen. Where is that? Nope, that's record. Share screen is on the bottom, should be on the bottom. Um, and it's a green thing that says share screen. Oh my gosh, it, if it was a snake, it would have bit me. It's so big. Good heavens. Okay, now we're at the right spot. There we are. I'm going to start over. Hi, welcome everyone. You are at um, the watercolor bits and pieces program. And we are going to learn how to do watercolor doodles today. So the, this particular class is something that is presented by two wonderful organizations. So I just wanted to make sure you knew about those organizations. Both of them have done a fabulous job at transitioning from in-person uh, events and presentations to online. And the first group is called the Renaissance Society, and that stands for at California State University Sacramento. Just briefly, it's about lifelong learning, and our goal is to learn, connect with others, and then share what we learn. That's one of our organizations. And the other one is Friendship Force of Sacramento. That is a cross-cultural group. We um, travel and host people in our homes in the name of Global Friendship and Peace. So you can just do a, uh, a Google search for either one of those if they sound of, you know, of interest to you. Our etiquette today, so we're asking that you mute yourself to minimize that background noise. And you can either unmute to ask a question or you can put it in chat. Mary Ellen's my tech host. She's from both organizations. She's a member of both as well, just as I am. And she'll be looking at the chat and interrupt me if there's um, a specific question. We just ask that you be kind and respectful to everyone. Remember, this is for fun. And keep in mind that your instructor is volunteering to present this. I am not, this was never my profession. It's something I enjoy doing. So a list of supplies, if you have these things close by, you're going to be able to do this right along with me. If you don't have them, I'm recording this and we'll be sending everyone a link to the recording once we're done. And you can go through it and watch to see, did I miss something? Or if you just wanna watch the live event and then do it later, that's an option as well. But you're going to need some card stuff cardstock or watercolor paper. I just want to say, I'm all about making art accessible to everyone, but I will tell you that better supplies, a higher quality, like watercolor paper, makes it easier and it does a better job, but it's also more expensive. So I want you to know you do not need it, but if you enjoy it, you might want to invest in something a set of watercolor paints with a brush, and you can do this with a kid's Crayola set. A permanent type of marker, fine tip is, is best for the doodle part. A red marker with a medium tip, you actually don't need, you could paint what I'm going to do with that red marker, but um, it's also nice to do with a red marker. Paper towel for drying your your brush if it's got too much water, pencil and eraser. Oh, we don't need an old toothbrush. I don't think I splattered anything. Water in a cup and a hair dryer to dry the painting before adding your ink details. Now I'm going to time it. I'm going to try to time it so it's you. You actually won't need to um, dry it, but I. I don't know how much water you're using, so it could be that you might need a dryer. All right, so let me put a spotlight. I'm going to change it. So, OK, 
Okay, I'm going to need to find that. So you can see my painting a little closer. Give me one second here. All right. Okay. Sorry, I had to do my phone over because I didn't click the record on my phone. Okay, now it should be showing. Okay. Still looking for my spotlight. Hold on, sorry. Huh, I can't find it on the participants. Must be at the bottom. It should be in your more. Yeah, I see it. I see it finally. I, I um, It was way at the bottom of my list. Now, can everyone see? Oops, it's upside, it's upside down. down. Yeah, sorry. It sometimes does that. My phone, when it changes to landscape, it does it the opposite way that I want it to. Come on. As you can see, I'm not a professional. We are doing this for fun. Of course, I had it all set up, but everything got met a step when I had to click, I'm okay with the recording. All right, then I'm just gonna switch it around. Sorry, sorry, you're probably getting dizzy. Is that right side up? Nope. There we go. Boy, I should have stopped the recording till about now. Okay, so if you've got your supplies in front of you, let's go ahead and get started. We're gonna make these three things. And actually one of our, this one was from the same page. So let's start, let's start with that one because that uses the most water. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to paint on just a strip of cardstock. You could do this one on, you know, a little three by five card and you could cut it. I wanted to go ahead and make a bookmark like I did here. So that's why I'm gonna do the strip. But this one is truly, truly, truly doodling. So I'm gonna leave the um, example right next to where I'm going to be painting. If you haven't already, please put a little bit of water into your watercolors so you can get the, um, get the paint that you'll be using. So just put a dab of water, um, kind of let it mix a bit so you can pull out the pigment and let's get started. Super, super simple. So I'm going to take, I'll move my, a little palette I made up. I'll move that over here so you can see what I do. So I'm going to start with a pink and my pink is very dark. So I'm gonna take some of my pigment and put it into the mixing or the blending area, but that's really, really dark. So for me, I am gonna add a bit of water cause I don't want it. I wanted a lighter pink. And all we're gonna do now there's two different things here. I have kind of like a basic shape of a heart and then just very loose circles. That's what I'm going to paint in pink. And you kind of can tell I have two different colors. I have a lighter pink and a darker pink, however you want to do it. But all we're going to do is we're going to take some of that paint and I'm going to do some circles and I might get a little darker pigment and make a heart. And it's very loose, very simple. This is on cardstock, so it's not the greatest, but that's all right. I'm okay with that. So we're just doing dots all over your page, a couple of hearts. Everyone knows how to make a heart. We learned that in about 
maybe not kindergarten, but not far off. We're going to let this dry. Now what I think I'm going to do to have a little variety is I'm going to take some of my yellow and add it to my pink and that's going to give me kind of a peachy color. So I'm going to put that in a couple places too that's very light. That's all right. Okay, so very messy, very simple. Fill out whatever sheet you're using, either your cardstock or watercolor paper. And if you've got your paper towel and if you have too much paint on your brush, just dab it on your paper towel. That's what that's for. I'm going back in and adding a little bit of pigment to my peach colored ones because they were a little lighter than what I wanted. Okay, once I, you have your, um, all of your circles in your hearts, then you wanna go into some green and a, a green leaf is very simple. I'm just gonna do a leaf for you. So you can do where you go one side up and then lift up, press and lift up to make more of a tip and then just fill it in. Or you can leave some white space, but you're starting, you add pressure as you go around and lift up. Start at the point, pressure and lift up. That's the outline. If you want to leave it open, that's fine too. But let's put some leaves on our paper here. Oops, I touched it while it was still wet. Okay, so take your green and just wherever you feel like, you know what, I kind of want a little leaf here. Let me put this back so you can see it for a reference. I'm going to put it close to some of my circles. That's a very dark leaf. I'm going to add some more water. Whoop, got a little bead in there. That's okay. What I mean by that is I touched my one of my circles that was still wet. And so I had some paint go into my leaf. That's called a bleed. A lot of times you want that in your watercolor. I, it was not intentional for me to have it this time, but I'm okay with it. It kind of just put a little, let me, let me lift that up so you can see it. So it put a little pink in my green right there, which kind of turned it a little funny color, but that's all right. You know, this is very, very loose, very, it's just a fun, fun thing to do on a Tuesday morning for those of us who are on the Pacific coast. Just fill it in as much as you'd like. And that is good for me. You can always come back once watercolor has dried and you can add another coat. That's fine too, absolutely. We had a question for you of what color pink and green paints you chose. You know, I, I don't have my, this is a, some paint I took from another palette and I don't have them marked. I think it's a rose uh, colored pink and, um, and I think it's a sap green. I believe are the names. But this is kind of like something I, I just got watercolors, um, a new set from my son for Christmas. So I moved some of my other old ones um, into this small palette because I thought, oh, this would be fun if I am traveling and um, just locally and I wanted to do a little painting. Okay, so what we're gonna do, move the painting that you just did out of your way. We want that to dry. We are gonna try not to have to use the blow dryer, but if we have to, that's okay. And let's talk about our cupcake. That's the next one that's gonna to have to dry. So let me put 
Let me put the uh, sample up. Okay, now what I'm going to do, because I'm going to show you how to draw it, I'm going to draw in Sharpie marker. Please don't draw in Sharpie marker. I'm doing that so you can see how I draw it. We're actually going to paint it first and then put the doodles on top. So you want to use a very soft, light pencil with an eraser. You're going to make very light marks so you can see it, but no one else necessarily can see it. So I'm going to draw with the pen, but please, you use a pencil. So you, if you need to correct, you can with that eraser. We're going to do the doodles, like I said, after we've after we've painted it and it's dry. So the what I always do is I start with the cupcake part, the bottom, the, um, the wrapper part. And I've already got mine in pencil. Oh, you know what? I think, yeah, I'm supposed to do the pen one on this. I have it so I can see it. But what you're basically going to do is, there we are, is just, just like everybody knows what a cupcake looks like. You're just bringing it down both side, each side, and then a little bit of a rounded bottom to make your base for your cupcake. And then we're going to start put the start putting the icing in. All it is is just kind of very loose, almost ovals. Just you know, cupcakes aren't perfect but they sure taste good. And we're just gonna go a little smaller on the next oval, kind of dip in if you want. There we go. That's the next layer. And then we'll do another, we'll do two more layers, another loose little oval on the top. Now this last one's gonna have a point in the middle, a, a little, little tip, a little, I don't know, doohickey thing just to make it look super fancy, okay? And up at the top here, wherever you like, three little hearts, tight, very light in pencil. We're gonna connect those with our marker at the very end. See, mine looks kind of lopsided, but I think it has a little character. I like it like that. And the last thing we're going to do in pencil on this is just a few of these cupcake lines. So there's no rule, no right or wrong, how, how many, but in pencil, very lightly, you're just going to do a few little lines so it gives it a little bit more dimension than if it were just your cupcake bottom and nothing else. It gives you a little bit more. So this should all be in pencil now. So I have mine in pencil and I'm going to do two. I'm going to show you the difference um, when we, let's see. I want you to be able to see the example. Okay, I'll, I'll do it. So here's the sample. This particular page that I have drawn in pencil, you can see it's pretty light. This is watercolor paper, and this is cardstock. And this is, who knows what that's from, but I take the back of cereal boxes, I also paint in acrylics, and I, I just rarely throw away any kind of cardstock because I feel like, oh, I can make something with that. So let's start by putting in the wrapper color. Now, I did yellow. You can use whatever color you like. If you want to do blue, whatever. you It's your painting. Make it your own. Use whatever colors you want. I'll put my paints up here. I'm going to do yellow, though, and I'm going to not make it um, super, super thick. I noticed on my cardstock that that soaks in quite a bit more. So I'm going to do my watercolor first, and you're just going to outline it and then fill it in. So I'm putting on yellow. OK, 
paint that in. It's almost a square. Don't be afraid to turn your picture. Make it the easiest way for you to paint. Don't think you have to just do it one way that that's the way everybody does it. Are you kidding me? Lots of people turn their paintings as they're working on it. So turn it so it's comfortable and just get the color that you want in there. You should still be able to see the lines in the middle unless you picked a really, really, really dark color and that's okay too. Even if it's really dark because those doodle lines are so simple, you can do it. Okay, so that's my watercolor paper. I hope everybody's had a good morning. I know I have. It's really lovely here in, um, in the Sacramento area. We started out with a bit of clouds, but it um, is sunny now. So that's gonna be great for later on today when I can go for my walk. Okay, and that is my, that's the cardstock. So you can see the difference, a little bit of difference there. Let's go back and now for the topping or the frosting, whatever color you want. I, um, you know, advertise these as Valentine um, do watercolor doodles, so I did mine in pink. If you are, if you wanted to make this, it's a really easy switch up to make it a birthday card. You might want to do it in blue or yellow or green, or any color you want. I think I'm going to go ahead and stick with the pink, though. But I'm going to make mine a really light pink. At least that's my plan. Let's see if it works. And I'm just going to go over the whole thing. I'm not even going to worry about those lines because I will be able to see them through the watercolor. Again, I'm not, I'm picking a light color so I can see through it. So that'll help me when I do my doodle part. I'm loving this. Great, thank you for that feedback. I'm loving that you're loving it. Cause it's all- I, I have to say, I put this in gallery for a little while so I can see you guys work. It's wonderful. Yeah. Cheers. It is so fun. And I said to some of you earlier, we are all artists. We, some of us have lost, um, maybe the idea that we're artists, but we are all artists. And art, it's not about perfection. It's about putting something down that you've, or making something that you've created or, or doing, you know, a performance uh, of some kind, if it's, a, you know, a live performance art. So it's not about perfection. It's about doing something you enjoy, using that creative side of your brain, and oh, I put my hand in that. So I've got a little smudge in this one. That's all right, no mistakes. Cause you know, I can fix that later and I'll show you what you can do with, if you get paint outside the area that you want it in. Just like Bob Ross used to say, it is happy accidents. There are no mistakes. Well, I'm, I'm talking about art, <laughs> not life. Okay. So hopefully we're getting pretty close to filling in our cupcake. Let me see what I can see.
And this class will be, um, we will probably be done before noon, but if anybody has a question or if you wanted to learn more about either of the organizations, I'm happy to stay on after for a bit, happy to do it. That's part of the whole reason for offering this class is to promote both of these really terrific organizations. So on the one that I have, that I painted on my cardstock, I did draw in the little hearts above. So I'm gonna paint my little hearts in red. You can do red hearts, you can do whatever, you know, goes with your picture, but we're just gonna paint those in. Just little hearts up there. They don't have to be the same size. It can be one a little further than the others. I drew mine super small and my, the brush I'm using is big. I'm trying to approximate a student brush. So they were a little too small. Can I ask you a question? Of course. <clears throat> um, so I don't know if you can see my screen, but I tried to make a purple. So I did blue and red. Yeah. but it's pretty dark. Do you know how I could have made that a brighter purple? I'm trying to make this for my niece. So um, I don't actually see your screen. There is something called, you um, now? There, um, you know what? I don't have it in gallery view. Um, it's Jillian. So if anybody is looking, Jillian, can you put it up again? Yeah, it's Jillian. Okay, let me look through. Oh, yes, yes, now I see it. Well, what you can do is you could try, um, it's a little harder to layer with watercolors, but if, if you had a color and you suspected, this is like before you put it down, if you thought it was dark, you can always test it on a scratch paper. And you could have, uh, there is a white watercolor you might want, I mean, if you don't have a white, you obviously can't, it's already down there. But you might be able to put like a, a pink on top of that and see if it, it brightens up. It and works. remember, Jillian, we are our own worst critics. So I'm sure that the person receiving your, your painting would go, oh, you know, it's great. And they'd just be thrilled you thought about them and that right. you to make something for them. So don't, don't be real hard on yourself. How it's only a piece of paper. Hearts? Sorry? It's only a piece of paper, so she you could do another one. Exactly. Now I'm going to show you what Very I was. Actually, this one is my watercolor paper. So you can see because my yellow is still wet, when I put my pink down, it did a, a bleed there, but I'm okay with that. You know, we get frosting over on our cupcakes all the time. And I didn't do the hearts on this one because I'm planning to make this into a birthday greeting. And then this is the one I did on cardstock. Okay, sorry for the glare. Um, let's see if I can try to get rid of that. Maybe if I do this. Yeah, I don't know where the glare is coming from. But you can see it's different. It's not as, it's not as, um, rich in texture, but it works, you know, it works fine. So let's take these two paintings and let's move those to the side. And we're going to do the third drawing, which looks like, let's see the example. Let me find it. It looks like this and you can paint this, but I'm actually going to do, I'm going to use a marker. I just saw this on Pinterest and I thought, oh, that's so cute. I love how that's intertwined. So it's two hearts, but you can see it's not two complete hearts. So let me show you the drawing. I'm going to do it in marker because I already have it in pencil, um, but you do it in pencil and then either do a watercolors or marker on top. So I'm gonna start with the smaller one and I'm just going to do just a heart, a nice big full heart. And the second side, I'm not going to close it completely. I go about four fifths down and I stop. 
And if you can see this first line, here's the halfway. It went a little bit over halfway because I'm gonna try to connect it up with this bigger heart. Do you see what I'm saying? My bottom line on that small one is over, it's beyond the middle where you would typically stop a heart. Okay, then I'm gonna connect up my top one. So I go a little bit to the right, a little bit um, off center. And I'm going to start with bringing it right or I wanna meet it right in the middle. Bingo, right in the middle. Then I'm gonna go from the center of this heart all the way down to the tip over here on my other side. So if you're doing this in pencil, you can erase as I had to do because I didn't do it the way I wanted to the first or second time. And this one, I didn't kind of curve as much. I like the curve there a little better. And if you've got it in pencil, you can take a red or a pink and you can go over with the lines. What I was trying to do is a little bit of almost just thickening part of my lines. So I was making it a little thicker up here at the top and then I let it be thin. And then as I'm coming on a downstroke, I'd kind of thicken that up just to give it a little dimension. But I didn't do the whole thing. Actually, when you're doing calligraphy, the down lines are your thicker lines. I'm gonna make a little tiny loop there at the bottom, little tiny dot. So you just play with this. If you don't wanna thicken any lines, you do not have to, it is your work. But if you leave it open, what's kind of nice about this design, which is not an original, this design's nice because you could make a tag or you could put names inside or just something that you know you wanted to do with it if it's open. If you if you colored it completely, you'd have to really color it with a different color, otherwise you're gonna lose this middle line. You know, I couldn't do that all in red. It wouldn't look right because I'd lose this piece of it. So I'm fine with how that turned out. And, you know, if you wanted, you could write something. in the middle. Everyone is so busy working. Good job, everybody. I'll let, give you another minute. So I know we had people join after we started and I wanted to let everyone know that I will be sending a link to the recording to everyone who registered on Eventbrite. And that way, if I am going to quickly for you and you missed something, you could watch the recording or please feel free to share it. It's something that we are not charging anyone for. And, um, you know, we love to just and share art with people and, and just briefly talk about the two organizations that are sponsoring this. So if you've painted these, set those aside to dry. If you just used a marker, you can stack them and just move them out of your way because we're going to come back to, you know what, this one for me, it was so wet, it is still not completely dry, but I think my cupcake is dry. Let me look. Yes, it is. So I'm going to come back to my cupcake and I won't need my watercolors now. You're done with watercolors unless you decide to add something. 
So let's come back to our, um, our cupcake. Now you do wanna get out your Sharpie fine tip permanent marker or it doesn't have to be the brand Sharpie, that's what I use, but it, you use whatever permanent black marker that you wanna use. And all we're gonna do now, if yours is dry as well, if it's not dry, just actually when I tilt mine to the side, I can still see some paint. So I'm gonna use a hairdryer real quick, excuse this sound for a sec. That was a different one I did. Here we are. Okay, so I'm gonna take my marker and I'm going to, in the very beginning, you outlined everything in pencil. All you're gonna do is take your marker on this particular one and you're just going to go ahead and trace those same lines. So you can start with your cupcake bottom Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. We're not trying to do any kind of reality thing here. It's a doodle. So we're just gonna outline that. And boy, does that make the bottom pop out. And then we're gonna go up to your icing and just follow your lines around. If you didn't trace it exactly, don't worry, it's fine as best that you can. You're going to outline that frosting all the way up. Our little top there. Okay, then I'll stop. I am looking at some of you. So when you're done, if you look up, I'll know I've got at least a couple of folks that are ready to go to the next step. I wonder, I wonder if I should use a different chair. This, this is hard to get back into. Do you want to try this one? Um, whoever's talking about the chair, if you wouldn't mind muting because we can hear the chair discussion. That'd be awesome. Okay, so if you've outlined your, your cupcake, oh, and, and you wanna outline your hearts too up at the top. And I'm not really great about connecting that up with my paint. So I've got some white in there, which is fine. I'll tell you, I can't wait to see some of these finished cupcakes. And these are the best kind. They're the lowest calorie cupcake you can eat, you can have. You can eat it, don't eat it, but certainly enjoy it. All right, now, if you've finished outlining your cupcake, we're just going to make, we're going to connect the hearts to the cupcake and it's just a spiral coming down using your pen going into the cupcake. So just loop and then bring it down loop. Here, I'll do it on a paper. I'm exaggerating it now. So if my, if my heart's here, I'm just going to go loop, loop, and then stick it in my cupcake. So look, kind of like sixes, repeating sixes. So let's connect up those hearts so they're not just magically in the air above our cupcakes.
Doesn't matter where it gets attached, anywhere into your cupcake on the top. If you can still see your lines in your um, cupcake bottom, go ahead and just trace those. If you can't see them, it doesn't matter. You know how to do it. So you're just drawing a few lines to give it some dimension. I'm not even going the whole way. I'm just doing part of it to give that a little bit of dimension. And guess what? We have finished one of our Valentine doodles. Have you forgotten the little black dots? Oh, I did, thank you. I did forget it. Mary Ellen, thanks for tracking with me on that. If you'd like, you can put these little black dots on. I actually don't like it all the way to the bottom. I did that and I went, oh, I don't like it. Um, so I'm just gonna do some at the top. Again, with my, you know, I'm not sure that pen's gonna do it. Let's see. There we go. I'm just gonna do a couple little sprinkles on like my top two. That's what, what I'm doing. You can do them all the way down, whatever you like on your cupcake. And if you'd like, you can do, you can just with a marker, you can just do a little saying. You can write happy Valentine's, love you. Sweet is what I did here. You can do whatever you like. Let me show you a couple of other um, things that I have done just fooling around, getting ready for it. This one I did this morning. So this is actually, I believe, on watercolor paper. And I put the heart in the middle, in, in the middle of the cupcake. And I left room down here because I'm actually going to um, stick a saying on there. Let me, let me show you what I mean when I say stick a saying. I have been stamping for many, many years. And my favorite stamps that I use all the time are things that might have to do with friendship, uh, birthday greetings, um, birthday greetings and friendship, and then thinking of you type saying. I happen to have one that said sweet. So I did this, this is uh, two chocolate covered strawberries um, on what they're made, I painted them with watercolor and then I uh, used watercolor paper. Now the white on top is an acrylic tip you know, a, a rolling pen to do that little cool stripe on there. But what I wanted to show you was this little sweet, that is a stamp. I, I have done a tiny, tiny bit in calligraphy. It's a whole nother art thing. You really have to practice it a lot. And I have stamps, so I prefer to just do the stamp. So I did my stamp, I cut it out with some fancy scissors, and then I colored the edge of my um, of where I cut it out, I did an ink pad. I just took a Q-tip swab, put some of my ink pad color on my Q-tip, and then just brush the very edge to help that pop out. And then these are just actually paint chips. Again, very frugal. So that is uh, one of the things that I I like to do with my little watercolor paintings. Here's another one. This is a, a more complex painting, but um, as you can see, I added, this is also a card I made and I have a happy birthday. And it's got just a hint of blue around and I don't glue it flat on my card. You can't really see, um, but it's that two-sided tape that has some dimension. I don't know what it's called, um, but it's this kind of tape. It's got just a tiny bit of dimension. So it pops it out a little. I prefer that look um, as opposed to just flat on the paper. So that's something you could do. And I wanted to show you, this is a little more complex um, watercolor doodle, but I saw this, this image and I thought, oh, that'd be fun. So I did the, I drew it out with pencil. Then I painted all the color. And then I went back in with my marker and did the doodling on top. And so it's not hard. It's very much like coloring this particular one. 
um, and just thought that turned out really kind of a fun little little design. So if there are no questions about the the uh, cupcake, I think we'll try to finish our flowers. Any other questions about the cupcakes? Oh yeah, we're doing great for time because this next part is a quick doodle. Now mine are still a little wet. So I'm gonna, again, sorry about this, but I'm gonna use my dryer. And this is actually an embossing tool, but it's the same thing basically as a hair dryer. If you're not sure if it's wet, sometimes when you tilt it, you can see, and if there's still a shine, it's still a little bit damp. All right, so let's get our example back in the, in the picture here. So I'm gonna probably do my hearts first. This is just doodling, so it's whatever you want to do um, on my hearts. For my bookmark here, I ended up doing like three different um, black lines around my heart. You can see it's not attached. It's okay. I like some of the white in there. I don't, I don't want it to be meticulous. It's just, it's impressionistic. It's just the impression of hearts. And then around, around one of my inner heart or somewhere along the line, I did these, these extra doodles just to give it a wow doodle factor, I call it. I just made that up, so it isn't really anything. So go ahead and start doing um, some of your doodles. If you wanna do your hearts first, that's great. And then we can go into how I did the roses. So just kind of fast going around, however many you wanna do, doesn't need to be exact. If it goes off your page, that's okay. Okay, once you've done your hearts, just go in and decide, you know what, I'm going to come along the line and just do an extra little doodle here or there. So I, on this one, I'm going to go from the middle and just do a spiral. Dum, 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 dum. There we go. This one, I think I'll come up from the side, spiral in, doesn't have to be perfect spiral. It's just extra doodles. I don't care for that one, but that's all right. All right, so once you've done 
your heart. So you can actually, you know, if we finish and you want more doodling, please go right ahead when we're done. Let's just learn how to do these roses. That's just a spiral. All it is, I start in the middle and get bigger as I go out. So go ahead and put some spiral in your flowers. It could be a rose, it could be, I don't know, imaginary flower of some kind. Can be messy, you can make it as big as you want. You can go over and have white space, you can not have white space and let the color be larger than your spiral. No right or wrong way. It's your flower, your watercolor do it all. You decide. One thing for sure, these are very fast watercolor paintings. All right, when we're done with our spiral on our flowers, let's just outline the leaves. If you want on your leaves, let me find a scratch paper. Like here were my practice leaves from earlier. All I'm gonna do is just easily and quickly, it doesn't even have to match up perfectly. I'm just gonna outline my leaves. But if you want, you can also do a line down the middle and do the little veins if you want more doodling. So either way, just the outline or the veins in your, in your roses. I mean, sorry, in your leaves. And I don't think I did anything else for those. So if you don't have use for a bookmark, I'm sad for you because I love reading, but you might be doing it electronically. I just personally feel like I'm on electronic stuff enough. I can actually hold a book in my hand if I, if I have that option. Um, so for the bookmark, I just punched a hole here now you can see it and then put a ribbon through it. And that's my bookmark. If you don't want a bookmark, but you want to use a gift tag, you could do the same thing. You could either put one hole here or you could put two holes and then have your, your, your ribbon go through and tie it on it. If you want to, you could put the name on the back or you could write the name in gold or sil silver um, and use it as a gift tag if you're giving a little Valentine Day gift. So let me just look at everything. Any questions about the messy hearts and flower doodle? Okay, what I wanna do is I'm gonna change my view to gallery and I'd like you to pick up and hold to your screen your favorite drawing or painting that you did today. I want you to bring it really close. So I, and maybe kind of peek over to the side because I want to get a picture of all of these fabulous artists. So what were, what were we supposed to do with the toothbrush? Oh, righto. Uh, it, actually, you must've come in a little late because I said we won't be using it. Let me just, oh, okay. let me get this picture and then I'll tell you what you can do with it. See, I'm taking, I'm taking a picture so you okay. can. All right, thanks. Thanks. Everybody hold your picture, your favorite painting. Oh my gosh, I love it. I love it. Oh, you did a great job, everyone. Wonderful work. Okay, so the question was what to do with um, a, a toothbrush, which I do in other um 
with in other classes, other paintings. So I'm just gonna, it, it is messy. You want something, you want something underneath where you're gonna do it. But I believe I have one right here. I keep all of my supplies on my art table. So I'm going to go into my paints. And for this, you want a very, very wet toothbrush, okay? I'm just put lots of water in there with some uh, color and I'll do it on this one. Actually, I'd rather do it on. Maybe this one. And I'm just going to flick it. So I'm going to take my thumb, pull back, and then let the paint fly. Okay. So it, it does this and it gives kind of splotchy paint little splatter on your, you can either do it on the side, you can do the whole thing, however you want. So this is what you get. That'll actually dry a little lighter, but you can get some paint fanciness on there. Okay, let me take the spotlight off. Does anybody have questions? Sandra does. Yes, Sandra. Sandra, you're gonna have to unmute. You, okay. you need, there we go. Okay, unmuted, okay. I have a couple of questions. Uh, is there a front and a back to watercolor paper? I you seem to see more of a texture on one side than another. Um, I have not heard anyone speak to that, Sandra, but I believe there is. And the way I do it is when I open my pad, whatever is on top, I consider that the correct side. Okay, I, I didn't pay attention to what I was doing, but I can tell now that yeah. some I did on the back of some in the front of others. Uh, Another question, um, can you suggest a good watercolor? I got this set at Michael's, so just a cheap set, and I don't like it very much. Well, and I've taken a couple of your other classes and I asked about brushes um, last time, and I did get a set of brushes that I was very happy with, just a three set of these, it was called Princeton snap brushes or something. And nice. they're, they're yeah. very, I can really tell the difference right. in the little cheapy things I bought at Michael's. Right, right. Yeah. Princeton is a good brand. You know, um, oh, let me think. It, if you're, I, I still am using student grade, Sandra, because I feel like it's a bigger investment. And um, I, the ones that my son bought me are, I think they're called art. Let's see. R A R T E Z A, but I haven't used them yet. They seem like pretty good. I don't know the pigment, but I get okay. them in the tubes. And okay. I it's online. Okay. Carol, Thank we're you. going to talk about classes in just one second. Um, did you have another question, Sandra? If, if I can recommend Kalinsky brushes as well, Kalinskys are also wonderful. They're good. Same. Yeah. Good, thank you. I have other names in my head, but I, they're just not where I can grab them. Um, so other classes, Mary Ellen put her email in the chat. If you want to be on the list to learn or, you know, to hear about our classes, uh, you, you can. They are offered through Renaissance and through Friendship Force. So we always advertise those two ways. Thank you. There's uh, Deborah. Thank you. Pelican Opaque Watercolors, another good brand. Um, but we will put the all the registrations on Eventbrite. Now, all of our programs are not art related, uh, although there are going to be art related classes. Mary Ellen is like a food historian, a I don't even know how many things. She's a published author, historian. Um, she has her fingers in almost every pot you could have it in. So she does a lot of food related um, classes. We both love art. So we're gonna offer some art things, all free, never a charge, never a charge for these classes. Um, you do get more options if you join either the Friendship Force or Sacramento, uh, the Renaissance Society, but the ones we're opening to the public, always free. And um, we will- but Can be I add one really quickly? 
March 11th. So look for it on Eventbrite if you're a, a member. It's going to be an edible art wheel and it just uses frosting, vanilla wafers, uh, colors, and you'll actually learn how to do the color wheel and then you'll get to eat it after. Right. Thank you, Mary Ellen. My next one that I'm, be, I'm actually the technical host is all about the history of the kaleidoscope. We have a speaker from Boston that will be presenting. She was a STEM instructor for many years and it's just fascinating. All of these are an hour or less. Um, my, the one I'm presenting myself next month will be how to make chocolate truffles using molds. That one we won't do, a, I won't be demoing it live, but we will, I will teach you how to make it. So be looking in Eventbrite. I'm sending out a copy of the recording to everyone who registered. In that email will be Mary Ellen's email if you want to be added to a list that we just let folks know. Here's a class coming up. We are not selling anything. We're not trying to sell your name anywhere. It's all about giving back to our community. We love our community. We enjoy sharing, being creative and learning things together. Um, my, I'm sure Mary Ellen agrees. There, it, it's the right time to be, uh, to be kind to one another. And we just wanna offer this up as something that we can provide and hope that you enjoy it. Hope you're interested in checking about the organizations, but if that's not right for you, join these classes that are open to the community. We love having you. We really, really do. I'm not just saying that. It's all about, uh, no, Jillian, I don't do Instagram. You know, I'm over 60 and I suppose I should learn it, but I had to learn Eventbrite re just recently and I'm not ready to do Instagram, but, um, but thank you for suggesting it. I know that would reach a younger audience. We're just kind of, yes, I'm happy, Julie, to tell you a little bit about the organization. So the Renaissance Society is at California State University, Sacramento. Oh, Lifelong learning. And it is a uh, membership for, it typically was for locals because we met on campus. Well, last March with the pandemic, everything went virtual and we've been just going full steam ahead and it is wonderful. It is, there is a fee associated with joining, but it opens up, I, I, I can't even tell you how many classes I can take. And but there are over, there are over 40 free programs just okay. to let you know. So to get your feet wet or if you don't feel like you can uh, join and we have members now that are all around the country and we have speakers from all around the world. Right, and so just Google the Renaissance Society and it's at CSUS, which is California. No, actually, that won't get them there, Kathy, sorry. Oh, it's Renaissance right. Society Sacramento. Okay, thank you. Renaissance okay. Society Sacramento. The other organization is called Friendship Force. I'm in the local chapter, Friendship Force of Sacramento. If you Googled that, you'd find our website. We are all about, an, or, uh, we're all about, we host people in our homes. We travel and stay with other members. We're all about cross-cultural understanding and um, learning about a community from the locals perspective. And then, you know, getting back to our community. So, Hello, can I talk to you? Yes, I was just finishing a sentence. Yes. So yeah. that is um, Friendship Force of Sacramento. Yes, Gerd, did you have a question? Yes, I was wondering what do you do with this? So you could give it as a, you could make a tag with it. You could write inside. See how I wrote on this one? I put a little that's, space. That's, that's, that's what you did. You just wrote inside. Yes, that's what I did. I'm not making that one into a card, personally. Okay, another thing that I want to do, I want to join your program because I really enjoyed it a lot. And how do I join your, your uh, program? Are you talking about Renaissance? Yes. Okay, I'm going to put a... I belong to, to, um, to the uh, Friendship Force in Sarasota. I belong to the Friendship Force. Yes. How you. Yes. Uh, um, and I, I want to do. I want to do everything that you offer, but how do I do that? 
So that would be through Renaissance and in the email that I'm going to send you because you registered, I will link both organizations so you can find out more information. Okay. And it's very easy to join online either organ. Well, you're already in friendship force. So uh, Renaissance is very simple and we just started yesterday, Gerd. So it's a perfect time to join. But there is a fee associated with that one, just like with Friendship Force, there's a small fee and um, but their programs are incredible. Just amazing. I had a gardening class yesterday. I've got uh, romantic comedies I'm learning about later today. I mean, it just goes on and on and on. And Mary Ellen said there are some free ones, but if you want access to the probably hundreds of classes. Yeah, over 140. Yeah, you would need to join, so. And yes. everyone has asked what uh, are your instructor's name is, it is Kathy Hart. Sorry. So yes. I just want you to know, and I really want to thank you, Kathy. This was spectacular, thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you everyone for joining. Have a great thank rest you. of the week and keep your eyes open for future events. We loved having you. Thanks, Mary Ellen. Thank, Thank you, you so heart. much. Thank you for that the heart. Awesome. Thank you for sending information to us, no? Yes, Kathy will be sending information.